Mars levels and the astonishing hypothesis. But what if you're not interested in psychology from a clinical perspective and you only want to figure out how the mind works? Well, in that case, you'll definitely want to study the brain too. Think again about the software versus hardware analogy. If you study computer science, it would be a little difficult for you to focus on just the software and know nothing about the hardware. To write good programs that won't crash, it would probably be useful for you to know the difference between RAM and the hard drive or how many CPUs you have. This idea goes back to David Marr, one of the founding fathers of cognitive science and modern vision sciences. According to Marr, to understand any information processing system, like the human mind, we need to study it at three levels, the computation, the algorithm, and the implementation. At the highest level, we need to define the problem, figure out what the inputs and outputs are. Say for vision, we know that we take in light patterns, and our visual system tells us that there are objects, what they are and where they are. But then there are different ways that our vision system could have figured this out. We want to know what algorithms are used. That is, at a software level, how was this designed or programmed? But even with that, it's not enough. We should also understand how the system is physically set up. In other words, implementation. I'll give you a famous analogy. To understand computation without implementation is a bit like understanding flying without understanding the structure of wings or jet engines. But understanding only about the jet engine will not be sufficient enough to tell you how to fly planes either. You also need to understand how an object can go against gravity in the first place. In other words, a bit of aerodynamics. All levels are important. Another reason why the brain is important to discuss now is that later on in the course, we will focus on the topic of consciousness. The problem is this. In modern neuroscience, we think of the brain as an information processing machine. But machines don't have souls, right? And they don't have subjective experiences. But we do. This is what the Nobel laureate Francis Crick called the astonishing hypothesis, that we, our sentient selves, are actually nothing but a bunch of neurons. How could this be? Even for Crick, who made contributions leading to the discovery of the structure of DNA, this is very astonishing indeed. So it's an intellectual challenge in and of itself, trying to understand how something as magical and wonderful as the human mind can come from just a bunch of brain cells signaling to each other. Let the challenge begin.